Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. So, back in October 2020, the media here in the good all United States of America went all crazy talking about these super secret emails from the State Department that got declassified. And let me tell you, people were going nuts trying to figure out what the big shots in our country were up to. Now, on page 470 of these emails, there's this little snippet that caught my eye. It's from this person, named Dinetra D. Seniger, or at least that's their username. They sent a message on December 13, 2018, asking for some seriously mind-boggling stuff. They wanted all the deets on this thing called the Resurrection Chamber of Gilgamesh, you know, a figure from ancient times, and they also wanted to know where his body was, and where those legendary Nephilim giants were buried. Talk about some crazy requests, right? Now, hold on a sec, because we gotta dive a little deeper into what these Nephilim are. According to the Wikipedia, they are mysterious beings or people in the Hebrew Bible, who are described as being large and strong. The word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants in many translations of the Hebrew Bible, but left untranslated in others. Some Jewish explanations interpret them as hybrid sons of fallen angels, or demigods. But here's the kicker my friend. As much as we'd all love to know what the heck is going on with these emails and what they're hiding from us, that particular line that mentioned the Nephilim, well, it's like a classified file that got locked up tight. Gaining access to it seems to be quite challenging, regardless of the level of effort applied. The information surrounding it is strictly confidential and kept under wraps if you catch my drift. I gotta admit though, this whole situation leaves me scratching my head. I mean, why on earth would someone in the State Department be asking about the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh, his body, and those Nephilim giants? It's like something out of a movie, right? But hey, that's the beauty of living in this wild and crazy country of ours. We're always uncovering some wild stories, digging into classified info, and trying to make sense of it all. It's like a never-ending puzzle, and we're all just along for the ride. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Oh, check out this amazing map of Cairo, folks. It's a real gem from way back in 1580, and we still don't know who exactly crafted it. Talk about a mystery. Now, let's dig right into the juicy parts, my friends, and leave all the small details behind. We're diving straight into the captivating right side of the map, where the real magic happens. First things first, take a gander at those peculiar pyramids. They stand tall and proud, catching our eye with their unique shapes against the expansive horizon. But hold on tight, because there's more to this puzzle my pals. Nestled right there amidst those ancient structures, we spot a remarkable bust of a woman, chillin' on what the smart folks call table mountains. Ain't that something? But hey, if we really zoom in and pay attention, we'll notice something downright peculiar. You see, those so-called mountains ain't no ordinary peaks we usually think of. Nah, there's something else entirely. They resemble the remnants of colossal trees, chopped down a long long time ago, and transformed into solid stone over the ages. Just imagine it my friends, a forest of giants, brought low and frozen in time, forever petrified. 
Now, let's ponder a question that's lingering in the air like a tantalizing riddle. If it was indeed human hands that took down these towering trees, can you even begin to fathom the kinda tools they must have used? I mean, seriously, think about it. The saw they wielded had to be humongous, right? We're talking about some monumental trunks here. And what about the brave lumberjack who took on such a colossal task? Oh, the mind starts to wander, conjuring up images of a figure with nerves of steel, ready to tackle the impossible. I tell you folks, this map of Cairo from 1580 is more than just lines and symbols on a piece of paper. It's a gateway to a world filled with mystery and wonder. It beckons us to delve into history and contemplate the sheer magnitude of those who shaped these ancient stumps and the courage it took to fell those mighty trees. So, let your imagination run wild as we journey into the past and wonder what other things have been hidden from us. Lately, a popular AI chat system has become a bit of a buzzword. When we first heard about it, our initial reaction was pretty clear, logically, this could only be a very bad thing for humanity as a whole. Now, as a website, we cannot condemn technological advancements. As with any tool, it has the potential to both harm and enhance humanity, and in many cases, it can do both simultaneously. But, there is an old expression. A convenience gained is a skill lost. Having AI ultimately means a loss of skills by the means of automation and standardization. One of the reasons many were against the Industrial Revolution was because they knew it was the end of the cobbler, the milliner, the smith, the plumber, the carpenter, the seamstress, the tailor, and so on. There are an endless number of skilled arts that have been lost to the machines of industry. The innovation and passion for what were once carefully crafted products has been reduced to monetary-based decisions, fueled by rampant consumerism. Skills that had taken generations to master and would take generations to rebuild have now been replaced with convenient low-quality disposable alternatives. It's a bitter pill to swallow, knowing that it would take generations to rebuild what has been lost to the relentless march of convenience. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.